subscribe, like, and comment on this channel. Today, this audio is about finding, or should I say, how to attract a partner by this girl who seemed very enthusiastic. There is also a question at the end which intrigued me about what is my life path? Using headphones and earphones will maximize your pleasure. Wishing you an awesome day. Enjoy and chill. Wow. All right. So um, I'm so glad she went before me because I was experiencing the exact same thing. So my question is, um, I've been lucky. The relationship that I have been in for the last three years has provided me with a lot of contrast. And therefore, clarity. And clarity is a really big prize, isn't it? It's amazing. Yes. And I'm so happy that now I know exactly what I want. Um, so the thing I think So when you know exactly what you want, are you feeling like you're going to have to go someplace else to get it? Yes. Because you don't have belief in the universe providing it right where you are. So is that your partner's failing or yours? Mine. And failing is too strong of word, but we just thought we'd get that out there in the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> so I think I feel like the thing that is holding me back. You know how you find a perfect partner? How? By thinking your current partner is perfect. <laughs> it's the partnering with your inner being. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes perfecter and perfecter and perfecter and perfecter. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So I think the thing that is holding me back is I am focusing on the things that bug me about you it. You think? Yes. <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping them active. You're bringing that expectation exactly. to the table and you are not disappointed. Exactly. And it's no Co-creation at its best. Exactly. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to do that. I knew that's exactly. how this was going to come down. I knew that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So and now I need help to, um, I need help because I need to learn how to focus on other things. Well, here's the thing. Law of attraction won't let you all of a sudden stop thinking what you've been practicing and start thinking something else. Mm -hmm. So you have to go general. You have to get really general. So in the middle of seeing something that you don't like, you've got to talk yourself off the ledge by getting general about it. That helps, but that only helps a little bit, but it does help. Or when you go to sleep at night, you could acknowledge while I sleep, all momentum will stop. And when I wake up, I can start fresh. That helps a lot. That's really a big tool of understanding. And then the next is when you meditate and quiet your mind altogether, as your vibration rises, and you find the vibrational equivalency of your inner being, now you're going to receive thoughts of how your inner being knows that you are dovetailing with this relationship. You see what we're getting at? Mm -hmm. Because your inner being might know that there is something that might be a better choice for you, but you want to make sure you're in that receiving mode before you start moving. Because if you make a decision from not that receiving mode, then what happens is you just take yourself with you and the next partner has all of those things that are active in your vibration. So it's different faces and different places, but the same thing happens. Yeah. Then that's exactly why I haven't left yet. So that makes sense. Yes. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? Go ahead. Do you think that your inner being knows clearly the aspects of a relationship that matter to you? I think so. And do you think that you have the ability to get into vibrational resonance with your inner being so that you know what your inner being knows? Mm -hmm. So you got that, didn't you? So now here's the question. When you have those thoughts of wanting to run away and go someplace else, do you think those are impulses from your inner being? Or do you think those are impulses from not being much in alignment? Definitely not being much in alignment. Well, we think so too. But that doesn't mean that your inner being is trying to get you to stay there forevermore. It's just that your inner being knows you can't get there from there. You got to stay tuned in. And so sometimes, in fact, frequently, in fact, our friends got us on percentages, 70 percentage ish part of the time. You will stay right where you are and you'll just find more about where you are and it will just blossom into the fullness of what you've been asking for so far. And sometimes your inner being will guide you in such 
wonderful, easy, powerful, clarity, certain ways to something more. Where does that leave you? So what would you say to someone that you're co-creating with like that? I like you pretty good. Let's see how it goes. How does that sound? If somebody said that to you, I like you pretty good. Let's see how it goes. Your reaction to this is really telling because if it makes you feel insecure, then you're not quite yet in the receiving mode. If it sounds like really a good idea, oh, then I'm satisfied. What more? What more? So many relationships are about insecurity. I'd feel better if you were here, I'd feel more secure. But what you don't realize is that that tramples your toes of freedom because what everyone wants is independence. What everyone wants is freedom. And so the very security that you think you want tramples your sense of freedom. And so you've got this push pull with relationships when they're not there, you want them to come. And when they get too close, you want them to go away. Come here, go away. Come here, go away. You're doing that to each other all the time. You see, you make each other crazy. Completely. Yes. <laughs> so now where are you? Okay. So I guess my question is when things happen and I have a knee jerk reaction, how do I, do I just go general? All right. So that? yes, that's all you can do. But here's the thing. When things happen, you want to ask yourself the question, was I aware of momentum building and could I have headed this off before these things happened? Esther said this to someone she really loves, some little person in her life a little while ago. She said, do you understand what momentum is? And he said, yeah, he really understood it. And Esther said, can you see how if you're aware of momentum and it starts to build into something that feels uncomfortable, that you could stop it maybe in the earlier phases when you still have control of the outcome? And can you feel how, if you don't stop it, then that it's going to escalate into something that then you can't control. And she could tell by the look in his eyes that he got that you have so much control when it's subtle and no control when it gets bigger. And so it's all about what you're doing when you're not rendezvousing. That's what matters more. It's all about your relationship with who you really are. If you're concentrating on your relationship with who you really are and reaching for thoughts on all subjects that feel good, then you're in the right place at the right time. In other words, don't ask anyone to be so perfect that you can just bungle around and be in any state of being. And when you get there, they'll make you feel better. Don't ask for something that ridiculously impossible. Instead, what you want to say to anyone that's important to you is don't you stand on your head for me. I've got control of my alignment. My happiness depends only upon that you're off the hook. And if you could say that and mean that every relationship would be so delicious. Nobody could rattle your chains. Nobody, nobody could shake you up. You would accept everything as your responsibility. And of course you're going to observe things. You're going to have knee jerk reactions to things, but your knee jerk reactions can be much softer from your place of consistent alignment. So when something happens, you deserved it mm. because you got ready to be ready to be ready to be ready for it. So Esther will say when she first started catching on to this and something really wonderful would happen, she would say, I did that. And when something not so wonderful happened, she said, I did that. Taking ownership of your point of attraction is the only place that freedom ever comes from and complimenting yourself on how well you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Did we get there? Yes, totally. Yes. Really good. Tell me more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One last thing is. How do you know you're on the right life path? Like can you get off of it? The right life path is alignment with my inner being who knows everything about my life, who knows who I was coming in, what my intentions were coming in, what I stirred up and have asked for since where I am in relationship to that. That's the only way, you know, satisfaction is the only way, you know, so you just have to play with this until you are able to discern those subtle distinctions between feeling good and feeling gooder and feeling bad and feeling better until you just know. And then this is the part that we like so much to talk about. So you've been listening to us for a while. So here's the evolution of the creative process. So 
Contrast is step one, which causes you to ask. Asking is step one. Step two is source answers and accomplishes or creates a vibrational state of beingness about what you've asked for. So it's done. When you ask, it is given. Someone should write a book about that. <laughs> when you ask, it is given. And then step three is you meditate or appreciate or look at positive aspects or segment intent. You just reach for good feeling thoughts because you want to feel satisfaction until you get pretty good at being in alignment with who you are. That's what step three is the receiving mode. And step four is just being really good at that. Sort of silly to make a whole step the same as the step before, but it's the mastery of that. And then step five is slipping out into resistance or contrast again, but not being mad at yourself understanding the value of the contrast so that you don't make mountains out of molehills. You just accept that, oh, this was a clarifying experience. So clarity is what you're looking for. Those are the five steps. Now, this is the piece that we want you to understand. We want you to begin thinking about being a vibrational being mostly and how vibrations become reality. How do thoughts turn to things? How does the economy become more? There's no one trucking things in from other planets. How does the more happen? And the more happens as more and more of you have more and more experiences with one another that cause you to ask for more and more that you then line up with. Because it isn't until you line up with it that it becomes a manifested reality that others can see. So how do these thoughts turn to things? And this is the part we really want you to focus upon because this is a piece that you're asking about. Let's assume that you've accepted that this vortex is real. Even though you can't see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or touch it, you've heard us clamor on and on about it enough that, all right, Abraham, we give up. We accept that it is a real thing. And now I'm going to take you at your stubbornness, Abraham, and at your determination to help me find it. I'm going to quiet my mind every day to just see if in stopping thought, and therefore stopping resistant thought if my personal vibration really will rise to the vibrational equivalency of my source and we want to say to you when that happens not just today but tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day 15 minutes a day you start receiving from the vortex into your thought the evolution of these creations in other words the thoughts start turning to things through the translation of your own mind that's how it happens so that you get impulses to be there rather than there you get impulses to say this to this person at this time you get the impulse to call this person or to say this or you begin translating this vibration into actual behavior that then and this is what we want you to hear you get to witness and therefore understand, therefore know that you created that because you can stand all day and listen to us either live or on recordings and hear us say these words over and over and over again. But unless you've meditated, you have not really deliberately moved your vibration upwards. Unless you've quieted your mind, you have not really accomplished that vibrational equivalency that we've talked about. Unless you have meditated consistently, you can't really tell when you're there or when you're not. Unless you've meditated, you cannot know for sure that you've consciously received a message from your inner being. But once these things happen and you know that you got that message from your inner being, and then you witness things clicking into place in all manner of ways, where you feel so blessed and so understood and so in the right place at the right time. Until you do that, then these are just words that you might trust because we're consistent, but you haven't shown to yourself because words don't teach. It's only life experience that teaches. So it's your personal witnessing of your reception and your personal witnessing of your translation of the vibration to the thought. Oh, and when that happens, when you get that thought, no matter what it's about, whether it's about moving furniture or whatever it is, and you know, you didn't think that thought because you weren't thinking that thought. That's not something you've been talking to anybody about. It's not any momentum that you had going It's momentum in your vortex that came purely out of your vortex and right into your mind. When that happens the first time, then you got to know I can be or do or have anything that I want. Yeah. Thank you.